Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is hydraulic power units and reservoirs. Our objective is to examine the constituent elements of a generic hydraulic power unit and discuss those features in a reservoir that aid fluid conditioning in a hydraulic system. Central to the proper operation of all hydraulic systems are those components that source flow and condition fluid. At a basic level, a hydraulic power unit, sometimes called a hydraulic power pack, consists of a prime mover, a pump, and a reservoir. Additionally, most hydraulic power units include a pressure relief valve and a means of filtration since these components are essential to the safe and efficient operation of the larger system. A hydraulic power unit can also include some ancillary or supporting elements, though not essential to the system, add some serious bling. Cool points go to hydraulic power units with integrated pressure gauges, flow meters, heat exchangers like heaters and coolers, offline or kidney loop filtration units, and sensory apparatus like pressure and floater level switches and temperature sensors. Finally, a hydraulic power unit may also include lockout and tagout devices like shutoff valves or electrical shutoffs. You're probably familiar with most of these elements already, but since they perform essential roles, let's do a brief review. A prime mover is either an electric motor or gas-powered internal combustion engine whose responsibility is to convert one form of input, electricity in the case of a motor, and chemical energy in the case of an internal combustion engine into rotational mechanical output. Rotational mechanical output is characterized by a rotational speed, often measured in units of RPM, and a twisting force known as torque, often measured in units of newton meters or foot pounds force. The relationship of torque, rotational speed, and mechanical power as it relates to electric motors is explored in other supporting lectures at the Big Bad Tech channel. The rotational mechanical output of the prime mover is used to turn the drive shaft of a pump, ordinarily a gear, vane, or piston pump. Pumps, regardless of the type, convert rotational mechanical power to fluid flow, a quantity calculable by multiplying the volumetric displacement per revolution times the number of revolutions per unit time. It should be noted that very rarely are the drive shaft of the prime mover and pump directly coupled together but rather this interaction occurs through the means of an intermediary coupling. The coupling's purpose is to compensate for shaft misalignment between the prime mover and pump and allow a technician to take the power apart for repair or services. The reservoir, or tank, is the combined source and destination of all fluid flow for a closed hydraulic system. Positive displacement pumps create a vacuum in the suction line and actively draw fluid in from the reservoir. Pressurized flow is routed to the business end of the hydraulic system being the valves and actuators that perform the required work, and return flow is exhausted back to the tank. At a very basic level, the reservoir's function is to ensure a ready supply of fluid is available to the system at all times. We'll examine other important functions of the reservoir in a moment. How these three basic components, the prime mover, pump, and reservoir, are physically arranged with one another, dictate the outward appearance of the hydraulic power unit. Ordinarily, the prime mover is outside the reservoir, However, the pump could either be external or internal to the reservoir. The pump and prime mover can both be horizontally mounted on top of the reservoir. Additionally, the prime mover and pump can be vertically mounted on the reservoir. Here's an example of a vertically mounted configuration with a pump internal to the reservoir. When partially disassembled, you can see the pump. The prime mover and pump can also be mounted to the side of the reservoir, as is often the case for small hydraulic power units. Here's a cutaway example of a side-by-side -side configuration showing the external motor and the pump inside the reservoir. Finally, the prime mover and pump can actually be mounted underneath the reservoir. These various mounting schemes can influence the degree of aeration experienced in the suction line with those pumps mounted to the side or underneath experiencing less should it occur. Aeration, if you recall, is the unintended introduction of air into the suction line of a pump. Hydraulic power units often include integrated pressure relief valves that may or may not be adjustable. A pressure relief valve is an essential safety device and limits maximum pressure of the system. When pressure exceeds the relief valve setting, either because of a closed valve position or the actuator having reached the limits of travel, the normally closed pressure relief valve opens and allows an alternative path back to the tank. Lacking a pressure relief valve, pressure could build to dangerous levels and possibly damage a hose, fitting, valve, actuator, or an operator. You'll note that a hydraulic system may be illustrated schematically with more than one reservoir symbol. 
However, this simply aids comprehension. There is only one reservoir. Rather than untangling a mess of intersecting and crossing return lines, a single reservoir can be best illustrated schematically multiple times. Additionally, hydraulic power units often include a return filter. A filter is a porous element, similar to a net, through which small holes allow the passage of particles smaller than the holes, however exclude and entrap those particles larger than the holes. Long story short, dirty liquid with suspended particles come in, and cleaner liquid with less suspended particles comes out. Any filter routed through the system must go through the return filter at low pressure prior to being emptied into the reservoir. The return filter's job is to remove contaminants from the larger system. The filter is often externally mounted on the hydraulic power unit inside a filter housing. The removable filter housing makes periodic filter changes a comparatively quick and painless affair. Here's a filter housing closed and opened. Most return filters include a clogged filter bypass and indicator external to the hydraulic power unit. The clogged filter bypass is essentially a check valve with a light biasing spring such that a fresh filter does not restrict flow and the bypass remains closed. If, however, the filter becomes clogged and a pressure differential develops across the clogged filter, the bypass opens, allowing the system to temporarily function without filtration. The bypass indicator warns an operator bypass has occurred and it is incumbent upon the operator to initiate an orderly shutdown. A system operating for any length of time without the proper level of filtration is just asking for trouble. Here's an example of a hydraulic power unit with a clogged filter bypass indicator. Green means good to go, yellow means warning, about to bypass, red means no go, the filter is clogged and fully bypassed. Other indicators serve to display pertinent performance data, the two most common being pressure gauges and flow meters. A pressure gauge, sometimes called a manometer, indicates pressure at a specific point within a hydraulic system. As currently illustrated, this pressure gauge would indicate pressure at the outlet of the pump. Often a hydraulic power unit includes a single pressure gauge fixed at this important location. In contrast, a portable manometer making use of numerous quick disconnect inspection ports located throughout the system could take pressure readings at other points in the system. For example, this filter housing includes a quick disconnect inspection port on the return line of the filter. To take a reading with a portable manometer, the inspection port cover is removed and the portable manometer inserted. When properly seated, the check valves in both the quick disconnect port and the manometer are pushed off their seats to allow pressure reading to be taken. It is incumbent upon any technician taking pressure reading to cover the port after use to prevent contaminants from being introduced into the system. A supplemental flow meter could also be used to visually indicate the flow rate to an operator or a technician. Simple flow meters are often orientation and direction dependent and cannot measure flow properly if mounted on their side, upside down, or when flow is routed counter to the desired direction. Meters like clogged filter bypass indicators, pressure gauges, and flow meters indicate basic hydraulic performance data for operators and technicians can be used to facilitate the troubleshooting process. We'll examine other common indicators associated with reservoirs in a moment. Hydraulic power units may also include some additional bonus features like heat exchangers and offline or kidney loop filtration units. Heat exchangers like heaters and coolers can be used to condition fluid operated in extreme environmental conditions. A heater can be used to ensure that oil remains within a given viscosity range when operated in a cold environment. A cooler, in contrast, can be used to ensure oil does not thermally degrade. For those systems necessitating extreme cleanliness and experiencing lengthy idle times, a hydraulic power unit may also include an integrated kidney loop or offline filtration subsystem. Kidney loop or offline filters are those filters that do not serve the main system, but rather filter fluid directly from the reservoir and back. A kidney loop filter ordinarily necessitates a small pump to drive the kidney loop circuit. It is in effect an isolated subsystem tasked solely with fluid maintenance. If the larger system experiences idle time, the kidney loop filter can periodically run oil in the reservoir through the filter, thereby making use of the idle time to perform regular maintenance. Finally, a hydraulic power unit may also include supporting sensory apparatus like temperature sensors and pressure floater level switches that relay important data back to the control system. These components may or may not be explicitly illustrated in the hydraulic schematic, although they do serve to coordinate the safe and efficient operation of the larger system. 
Here's an example of a partially disassembled hydraulic power unit with an integrated thermocouple. Don't be the person that bends, breaks, or loses this sensor since it's essential to the proper operation of this system. In summary, a hydraulic power unit is essentially everything you need to really run a complete hydraulic system, plus some bonus components, but minus directional control valves, actuators, fluid conductors, and any supporting components like pressure or flow control valves. I like to think of hydraulic power units as the base or source from which all good things spring. In keeping with this analogy, hydraulic power units really are quite literally the base of some hydraulic systems with a manifold or assembled stack valves housing a majority of the directional pressure and flow control valves being directly mounted on top. An A and B actuator conduit are routed to some remotely located actuator and you've got yourself a complete hydraulic system. Here's an example of one such system. You can recognize the motor and reservoir and the manifold to which are attached numerous components like valves and accumulators. Hydraulic power units are ordinarily specified by pressure and flow rate requirements, similar to pump performance charts, and electrical requirements, assuming an electric motor prime mover. Additionally, hydraulic power units specify reservoir capacity, where flow rate, conductor volume, and cycle time play important roles in determining a required capacity. Finally, hydraulic power units with integrated components like pressure relief valves are specified using performance data specific to pressure relief valves. As more ancillary bling is added to a hydraulic power unit, the size and complexity of the data sheet grows proportionally, as does the price. Manufacturers offer many different configurations of hydraulic power units from the smallest to the largest of applications. Additionally, a manufacturer's data sheet should be able to provide exploded diagrams of a particular hydraulic power unit as well as any replacement parts or seals. Moving on, let's close out this lecture with a quick discussion of the reservoir. At first glance, one might consider a reservoir a relatively trivial and passive part of a hydraulic power unit. However, it serves numerous functions contributing to the efficient operation of the larger hydraulic system. First, a reservoir's principal purpose is to store fluid not in use and ensure the pump has a ready supply of oil available when required. When the suction phase of the pump produces a vacuum in the suction line, atmospheric pressure in the case of a vented reservoir pushes fluid into the pump. As oil is routed through the system, it is returned at low pressure through the return filter back to the reservoir. The reservoir is therefore the source and destination of all flow in a closed hydraulic system. The suction, return, and any drain lines all originate and terminate in the reservoir. The suction line of the pump must be immersed below the level of oil in the reservoir to prevent aeration. Schematically, this is sometimes illustrated as the suction line touching the base of the reservoir. However, this does not mean it does so physically since the opening would be blocked if it shoved all the way to the bottom of the reservoir. Ordinarily, the suction line is supported off the floor and cut at a 45 degree angle to facilitate easy entry. The main return line is also customarily routed such that it is below fluid level to prevent turbulence and agitation of the reservoir contents. Drain lines, in contrast, may be terminated above fluid level to prevent any back pressure from developing in the drain line and unduly affecting those components that necessitate external drain lines. Drain lines terminating above fluid level are sometimes illustrated schematically as floating above the reservoir floor. Returning your attention to the suction line, a suction filter sometimes called an inlet or sump strainer, filters oil prior to it being introduced into the system by the pump. Suction filters are designed to work at vacuum conditions since they are in the pump's suction line. The suction filter may or may not be explicitly illustrated in the schematic diagram. Suction lines, by the way, must be designed to withstand vacuum conditions and not collapse inwards. For this reason, suction lines often include rigid internal reinforcements that allow them to remain open. Here's an example of a partially disassembled hydraulic power unit with a suction filter in the pump suction line. The second main function of a reservoir is to clean and cool oil before it is pumped back into the system. The reservoir's surrounding walls are passive heat transfer surfaces. A reservoir also commonly includes a simple yet ingenious device known as a baffle. A baffle is a plate or half wall that simply physically separates the return and pump suction line. In addition to preventing aggressive sloshing of the reservoir contents for mobile applications, a baffle is simply a minor obstruction between the return and suction portions of a reservoir. The baffle, therefore, prevents freshly returning oil from being immediately pulled back into the system. This delays reuse, 
allowing returning oil a chance to cool, separate out any entrained air or water, and settle out any particulate contaminants. Reservoirs commonly include other components like clean-out covers, breathers, filler ports, sight glasses, thermometers, drain ports, and magnets. Reservoirs must be regularly cleaned, and for this reason they may include a removable top or perhaps a removable clean-out cover on the side. Here's an example of a hydraulic power unit enclosed in a sound reduction enclosure with a clean-out cover on the side. This smaller reservoir's top comes off completely for cleaning or maintenance purposes. Ordinarily, reservoirs are supported off the floor to prevent rust and corrosion issues as well as maximize effective heat transfer to the outside air. A breather is a device that allows air in and out of a vented reservoir, however it excludes contaminants like dust, dirt, and insects. Breathers are essential for vented reservoirs because atmospheric pressure pushes fluid in when the pump creates a vacuum during the suction phase. A blocked breather may result in poor system performance. A filler port, as the name implies, is a means of filling the reservoir when it needs to be replenished. Filler ports ordinarily include a coarse mesh strainer over the opening to prevent the inevitable screw, fly, cell phone, eyeglasses, or wedding ring from tumbling into the drink the moment you open it up. Despite the secondary means of protection, it is a recommended practice to clean the immediate area of any accumulated dust or filth prior to opening a filler port. Breathers and filler ports can also be combined such that they perform both purposes. Sight glasses are inspection ports mounted on the side of the reservoir that visually indicate the level of fluid in the reservoir. Sight glasses, in addition to indicating level, also commonly include a thermometer indicating the temperature of the oil. Both level and operating temperature of the oil in the reservoir are crucial pieces of data when troubleshooting a hydraulic system. Reservoirs additionally include some means of draining the system of old oil. Drains may also incorporate a small magnet in close proximity to attract any metal debris or any entrained screws, eyeglasses, or wedding rings. Magnets full of debris are a clear sign of larger issues. Alright, that's about it for hydraulic power units and reservoirs. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at hydraulic power units and reservoirs. We discussed components commonly packaged in hydraulic power units and how those components contribute towards effective operation of the larger hydraulic system. Additionally, we discussed common hydraulic power unit specifications and finally discussed common features of reservoirs that aid fluid conditioning. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.